The minority in parliament is asking government to rescind its decision to redirect funds from the district assembly common funds, explaining it could have consequences for the decentralization process. In March 2018, parliament appropriated an amount of over 9 million CDs at the various MMDAs for their various developmental projects. But a new directive from government through the local government minister, Haji Ali Mamahama, redirected the funds. In the new formula, 40% of the funds is to be allocated for school feeding program, 20% to Nation Builders Corps, 20% to planting for food and jobs, and 20% to the assemblies. But the minority at a press conference addressed by Deputy Ranking Member on the Local Government Committee and MP for Host Central, Komla Podo, says the move is illegal because it was not contained in the budget approval for the assembly by parliament. Information that a directive has gone out to the MMDAs that the direct transfer allocated to and approved for the MMDAs should be strictly applied as follows. A, school feeding program, 40%, and that amounts to 362 million, 399,992 Ghana cities and 80 pesos. B, Nation Builders Corps, 20%. That amounts to 181,199,992 Ghana cities, 40 pesos. The above directive was not contained in the approved formula for disbursement of the District Assembly's Common Fund for 2018. That means it does not meet the legal requirements for the application of the DACF. Indeed, it is being done on the blind side of parliament. This financially weakens the assemblies and in effect derails the decentralization and local governance process. The directive is illegal and extremely restrictive. During the debate in Parliament prior to the approval, the three priority projects, namely the school feeding, the uh, NAPCO, and the PFJ, that is planting for food and uh, jobs, were brought up on the floor of the House. The shortfall will seriously impair the planned activities of the MMDs who needed these funds to complete the numerous projects being undertaken by the assemblies. In order not to defeat the purpose for which the DACF was established, the committee recommends that the Ministry of Finance should strictly adhere to the provisions of the Earmark Funds Capping and Realignment Act 2017, that is Act 947, and not further offload programs onto the already capped funds of the funds. We hear the voice of Komla Kbodo, who is Member of Parliament for Whole Central. Well, the minority says that the redirection of the funds is an indication that government is struggling to fund its flagship programs. They have, in effect, asked government to immediately withdraw the directive and, other means, and find other means of funding for their programs. We view this illegal directive as one of the indications of the government's inability to fund its numerous promises to the people of Ghana. It is an act of desperation to fulfill promises, the funding of which was not well thought out. We note further that the District Assembly's Common Fund has also been subjected to capping under the earmark funds capping and realignment act, which I earlier referred to. In 2018, the fund has been capped to 1,812,144,435 Ghana cities. This act is, in our view, also considered unconstitutional. We are aware of the pendency of a lawsuit at the Supreme Court of Ghana regarding the interpretation of no less than 5% of total revenue to the DACF. We urge the court to expedite action on such determinations so as to clarify and strengthen the operations of the Common Fund. 
We note again with concern that all the other traditional earmark funds are under similar threat and are dying off slowly or gradually. The GET fund is heavily capped, and yet what is left is being used for recurrent expenditure. The National Health Insurance Fund is also heavily capped, and yet what is left is being applied for the payment of nurses training allowances. Komlak Bado is a member of parliament for Ho Central. Let's get on the phone now and, and speak to uh, my colleague, Kwesi Parker Wilson, who has been at the press uh, conference. Uh, Parker, they're describing this as unconstitutional, illegal. That is the redirection of the funds uh, to the MMD, MMDAs. What more do they say? Well, um, you see, clearly the minority is not really happy with government decision because uh, they believe that clearly we directing the funds meant for developmental project of all the local assemblies that clearly will be a toll on their finances. And for them, this was something that came before Parliament a month long by. And then the Parliament decided that, listen, they would have to use money meant for the assembly to do or undertake projects that are meant for the assembly and not divert the funds into a government promises because they think that government is really struggling. As a matter of fact, they want to use different avenues to uh, find some of their promises. And they made reference to the uh, school feeding program, the nation builders for the passing for food stuff, and balance for assembly on a uh, project, which is just 20%. So the 100% of that assembly would have to use uh, in terms of financing different projects. They are rather going to use just 20%, to which the minority believe that Parker, did they speak of any plans to raise these concerns on the floor of Parliament? Well, they never mentioned of uh, plans, but what they said was that they are raising these concerns so that the minister responsible for local government will quickly rescind her decision of public the instructions being given uh, to the uh, district assemblies, I mean the MMDCAs, so that the MMDCAs would have what is due them in order for them to undertake um, Uh, uh, Parker, I, I believe that the press conference is over, uh, the minorities press conference is over as we speak? Yes, it is over, uh, Gifty. Now, as we speak, I mean, Parliament just ended their session today. And you know that this morning we reported that the minister responsible for communication, that is Madame Esla Owusu, mm. was to appear before uh, the committee and brief them on the controversial deal between the government and Kelly uh, GVG. But unfortunately, the minister was uh, conspicuously missing at the committee's meeting. The minority tell me that they were there around 12 o'clock because it was even advertised as far as the other people was concerned mm. that the minister was going to meet the committee at 12. So they were there at 12. Unfortunately for them, the minister, the chair, and the vice chair of the committee did not show up. Mm. And then none of these individuals gave the indication that they were not going to come. So for them, they were quite surprised that the minister would disrespect the committee, including the, the, the chair and the vice chair of the committee. So um, I expect that whether or not, I mean, uh, the short clearance from the speaker and what has been the reaction from the majority as a whole. Now, the answer to me was that the majority is saying that the, 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 the minister responsible for communication will appear before Parliament on Thursday. So they should wait for her on Thursday so that they can ask all questions. But they have argued that on the floor of Parliament or perhaps at the plenary, they would have for the time to address the questions because at the committee, they will be given enough time to ask a series of questions or follow-up questions because the deal between government and attorney GVG clearly um, 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 it, 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 it's really not understandable. I mean, it's a ripoff as they want to put it. So for them, they need some understanding. But this is what happened. I mean, a minority okay. clearly is not happy with, with what happened um, this afternoon. Right.
Well, I, I, I actually asked about uh, whether or not the press conference was over because I wanted to find out if there has been any uh, responses from the uh, members of the majority to, to, to what the minority is calling the, the illegal and unconstitutional, the redirection of the District Assembly Common Funds. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, the majority, um, when I spoke to some of them, told me that they were hearing it from me for the first time, mm -hmm. so they would have to peruse the mm -hmm. document or the statement put together by the minority before they can comment on okay. the subject. Okay. Paka, thank you very much for those updates there. So if you're listening, if, if you're watching, uh, you've just known that the communications minister who was suspected to appear in parliament today did not. And there has been some explanation from the majority from Paka there. The minority in parliament is also uh, calling for government to rescind this decision uh, to petition the district assembly common funds to because they, they, they think that government's is intending or government intends to fund their flagship programs which is part of their campaign promises by the way they believe that if government wants to uh, implement or uh, uh, make good on their promises to Ghanaians they should find a different source of funding and not use the district assembly common fund you're still watching the polls with me gifty and